What's going on team? Welcome back along to your home of rugby and we have a special little run of episodes for you coming up this week. Of course we are just days away from the start of the big event. The Rugby World Cup is starting this Friday and of course what would be a Rugby World Cup tournament without a little bit of a preview of the pools, the teams, what we think is going to happen and how we think it will outcome as well. Today we've got two special guests joining us. We'll be taking a bit of a look through Pool B and we're going to be seeing what their thoughts are on the pool. But before we kick underway, just a reminder that you can check out our picks already as we go through the tournament because we'll be on Super Brew. We've got a special league running on there. You can join up with the Cornflake League. The link and description and will be in the description. These chaps will hopefully be there. Brett will definitely be there, I know for sure. Shane, we'll have to put some peer pressure on you as well to get in there. But you can join into us and see what we think going forward. And of course, match by match daily previews will be on BehindThePost.com. So go there and check that out if you want to see what I think about the games each and every day of the Rugby World Cup. But today, we're here for Pool B. And of course, I've already ruined it who our guests are today. But welcoming back to the channel, Brett Hartley. It's been a while. Welcome back, Sarah. How are you going? Um, yeah, not too bad, man. It's, um, it's, it's good to be back on here. It's actually like, it's, been, it's come full cycle. I think my first video on your channel was previewing the 2015 World Cup. So, um... Four years, not too bad. Um, hope I can talk some more dribble today. Yeah, you don't have the balls to down talk today. It's not super rugby, so you have to pick on <laughs> someone else. And joining him from the same side of the ditch will be Shane Robert from Australia as well. Joining us for this one. How you going, Shane? I'm good, um, Steve. Um, mate, more excited than seeing a kangaroo in my backyard. Rugby <laughs> World Cup. It's, it's up again. Um, and let's get it on. It's, it's, it's going to be a very good tournament, I reckon. I do agree. I think it's going to be a fantastic tournament. We've got, of course, the five teams to look through in Pool B today, which are going to be New Zealand, South Africa. Then we've got the Italians. I mean, it doesn't really matter who else is in it, but it's Italy, it's Namibia, and it's Canada. We're going to kick things off, first and foremost, looking at the All Blacks team as the number one seed in the pool. Now, tell us, Brett... It's the arch rival of your boys. <laughs> it's the first match of the World Cup for these two sides as well. But the All Blacks team, what are your thoughts been on this heading? And I mean, this is this is what the Springboks fans, the Springboks players have been focusing on is this mm. All Blacks team. When you look at it, what do you see? What does it tell you? Yeah, I think you're, first of all, I think you're exactly right. I think ever since we saw um, our name get drawn with, with the All Blacks, it's definitely the thing we've been looking at. I think it was like two two years ago the pools were drawn. So um, we've known for for the last few years that we are going to be playing this team and you always want to match up. And fortunately, we have matched up very, very well with this team over the last two years, obviously getting a win in Wellington last year and then getting that draw, um, escaping luckily in the last few minutes this year. So um, we have matched up quite well and obviously historically we've matched up quite well with this All Blacks team. Um, the rivalry sort of faded a little bit over you know the last World Cup cycle, but definitely the last two years, the rivalry definitely back on. Um, All Blacks team this year, um, sort of standard for them in a World Cup year. They, they do tend to struggle in the test leading up to a World Cup. Um, it's, just, it's just the way they do things. Um, 2015 World Cup, very similar thing. Obviously losing to Australia, losing the Rugby Championship. Um, wasn't an issue with them um, when they came into the World Cup. They they always come in prepared for 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 it. Um, squad pretty standard. A few surprising uh, omissions for them, especially guys like Lamarpi. Uh, Liam Squire ruled himself out. Um, definitely a guy you'd like to have there. But um, in terms of their squad, I think it's it's pretty a pretty standard team. Definitely a very very good team. Um, like I said, Lamarpi is probably one of the only guys I was I was surprised with. Um, but, um, you know, you never underestimate the All Blacks and they're, they're going to be looking for that three-peat. Yeah, for sure. That's number one priority list, isn't it? When you look at the team, Shane, big strengths, big weaknesses. Where do you think teams can exploit or where do you think the All Blacks are going to get one over their opponent this year? Oh, look, they'll always start strong because it's it's the New Zealand are a tournament team um, like the Springboks that we're going to talk about shortly um, and, and the Wallabies. Well, hopefully. Um, but I think I think the big issue, obviously, is the pressure of the three-peat. Um, other than that, I think they'll do pretty well, obviously, in, in, the, um, in the group stage. 
having South Africa first up is is very is going to be a tough physical game for them. So they, I think there's there's not too many weaknesses that the All Blacks have. Um, I think it's more the strength of that back line and their forwards are really looking forward to seeing how Bowden Barrett goes again. Um, certainly he'll earn those zeros on his Auckland contract next year. <laughs> but, um, and, and, of course, the question mark is, 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 gonna, is Sonny going to be there or not? I think that's been a bit of speculation and conjecture recently. But um, he's, he's a world-class 12, in my opinion. Um, they just they've got strength on the bench. Their finishers come on. They know that um, Steve Hansen has coached this side very well. So you know I, the All Blacks are up for it and uh, bring on bring on the All Blacks and the Springboks to start this thing off. It's going to be crazy. Of course, the big question is that first Test match kind of leads perfectly into the next team we're going to look at. But All Blacks, Springboks. I think I know what way you'd go for this, Brett, but yeah. let, let's give everyone a nice early pick. Who, who do you think is going to put the marker in the sand here to kick off their tournament? Um, obviously, like, like you said, um, <laughs> I'm going with my boys of the Springboks. Um, I think they're definitely, in terms of this year, in terms of 2019, I think they're definitely the form team heading into the World Cup. Um, just with the results I had, one of the only Tier 1 sort of unbeaten teams heading into this into the World Cup. Um, had a very, very good year. Um could say we're quite lucky in Wellington to get that draw with that last play, Hershey Yankees, um, getting that kick off, um, off Colby. But um, we, we've had a very, very good year, playing a very positive brand of rugby, a very consistent brand of rugby. Um, and touch wood so far, we haven't been too affected by injuries. Um, obviously, guys like Sia Khaleesi coming back from, from quite long-term injuries. So, um, look, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go Africa, but very, very close, uh, probably South Africa by four. It's going to be a tight one. They are the second seeds in the pool, obviously. This, the, the World Cup, it's a bit of a kind of an insult and waste to some teams, isn't it? It's drawn so early. Um, if you draw it yesterday, it'll be a much, much different tournament than what it is right now. But Shane, the Springboks going into this, they've looked so good in 2019, haven't they? They've really unearthed a great, not only team, but the, the culture within the squad too is, has been remarkable, a, a leap and bound from what it's been in previous years. I think we saw the Springboks start to step up a gear when they played um, their second game against the All Blacks two years ago. Uh, they've been preparing for some time for this. And they, they had a reasonable rugby championship last year um, and they obviously won it this year. They've gone back to simple management plans of how they're playing their rugby. And that's what the Springboks of old under Jake White did when they won 07. It's really exciting to watch the forwards um, crashing through um, the back line, knowing what to do when the forwards have done their job. So it's um, and the Springboks preparation has been outstanding, winning the rugby championship, um, doing it pretty comfortably against Japan um, in in the warm up game last weekend. So uh, all all. And, and not forgetting, the Springboks did finish third at last year, the last Rugby World Cup. So um, first versus third, um, you know, a replay of that World Cup semi-final. They weren't that far off making the final last time. Um, so uh, there's there's a lot of positives for the Springboks. And even if they don't get the result on Saturday, they are going to get some good results in this tournament. So um, look out. Don't rule them out to make it very much into the deep end of the tournament. Yeah, a lot of talk's already been about the build-up to this tournament, about how a team has never won losing a match during the competition so far and how pretty much they're counting out the loser of this opening clash between the All Blacks and the Springboks, which is a bit too harsh, but, I mean, history is there. And, but, I mean, history on the same account is made to be changed, it's made to be broken, things are made to be um, remade, aren't they, and rules and, and laws and the way things go. But going into this... Um, Brett, you look at the Springbok side you look at this All Black side they're the two big linchpins of it mm -hmm. they all pivot uh, pretty severely on key men and I'd say normally the guys in 10, Hunter Pollard for the Springboks Bowden Barrett, 10-15 doesn't matter what shirt they're in those guys are going to be huge if they stay fit it could be a huge difference how their tournament goes 
Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think Pollard especially is, is very key to, to the Springbok side. Um, he's really matured uh, after his long-term injury. I think he had a lot of time to work on his basics, um, especially things like his kicking game. His goal kicking used to be in 2015 World Cup. It wasn't the greatest, um, but I think his goal kicking, is, he's definitely one of the premier goal kickers now now in the world. And it's, it's always, no matter what team, it's always going to come down to a 10 battle um, at the end of the day. Um, for most most of the tier one teams, obviously Barrett, whether he's wearing ten or fifteen, you know he'll still get himself very very involved in the game, um, and he'll be that one taking taking the ball forward into contact, um, looking for space. Um, if Moana, um at ten sort of gives them um, gives Bodie some more space, but I think at, at ten, I think um, Bowden's still probably the best player in the world um, at this stage. So um, it's definitely one of the more interesting battles. That's indeed. Yep, it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a, really the whole pool is gonna just congregate around that one match, isn't it? How it goes out? Because the rest of the teams, we'll talk them about in a second. Probably not going to be up to the standard. But Shane, final thoughts on these two guys. Obviously, we asked, we asked Brett before that first meeting, that big clash. Uh, who are you gonna be backing? Because you're kind of a neutral in in this instant, being from Australia, being a, a obvious Wallaby supporter. There. Um, what way do you think this one's gonna slide? Uh -huh. Look, it's going to be close. I reckon there's only going to be a couple of points in it. Um, I'll go and far as say, so there'll only be one point in it. Um, having done my first two Kentucky trips in New Zealand, I will be going for the All Blacks. Um, and I um, just think that there's probably something there, of the, the pressure and the expectation, and we always see the All Blacks rise to that, but I think the Springboks will be ready for them. Um, not far off they are real contenders here so they'll, they'll want to get out there too and uh, Brett's right the, the battle of the 10 is going to be a little bit of the two be bring it on bring it on I think, I think I think one point I forgot to mention was that South Africa have also, aside from Japan, they've been, they've been in Japan for the longest out of anyone, and it's a pretty difficult, pretty unique climate for a World Cup. It's very, very hot, 30 degrees, humid. Um, I think, look at the weather report, it might even be raining on that day in Yokohama, so it's just going to add some humidity. I don't think it's going to affect the heat too much. I think it's going to ramp up the heat, if anything. So it's going to be nice, sweaty, slippery, um, and I think South Africa have done a really good thing by, by rocking up to Japan a few weeks early. Yeah, that, that's a huge difference, isn't it? They have that extra week in there to climatise themselves to get ready. Could be the difference. Um, but, you know, who knows? I would not rule out a team losing an opening game of the World Cup, um, winning the whole tournament. I, I would mm. not rule that out at this stage because, for me, these are the top two teams in, in the competition. They are the top two favourites for mine. But there is, of course, three other teams in the pool. The Italians, they have a third seed in there. And you've got to feel sorry um, for this team, don't you, Brett? They're coming in the here. Oh, they don't have much luck in the Six Nations. They really get a hard time. They get bullied by the bigger teams. And then what more do they need <laughs> than to be thrown in there with the All Blacks in the spring box? I mean, the positive for me when I look at this Italian side is they're flying under the radar. No one mm. is looking at this pool and saying, ooh, Italy could do something. Are mm. they? They're all looking at the All Blacks, all looking at the Springboks. So surely it's going to be an advantage here for the Italians. Look, I think if there's, <laughs> if there's a chance for an upset in this pool, I don't think it's actually going to be Italy winning. I think it's actually going to be Italy losing, to be honest. Um, I don't really... Obviously, they beat the Springboks a few years back, um, but that was sort of what I like to call the dark the dark ages for, for Springbok rugby <laughs> under, under Alistair Kutsi. I wasn't wasn't too much good things happening in that period. Um, but I really don't expect them to do really well. They are flying under the radar, like you said, but I think that's for a pretty just cause. Um, there's, there's not really much that they can do. They don't have a huge amount of weapons um, that could really hurt a tournament-ready you know, New Zealand and South Africa. I think mean, South Africa are done with being upset after that Japan game in, in 2015. <laughs> um, I can't even imagine what would happen if they got upset by Italy in this, um, but hopefully that won't happen. I'm praying that won't happen. Um, but I definitely think if there is an upset, I think it's going to be Italy losing to one of the two smaller teams in the pool. Not a bad shout. Not a bad shout at all. But, I mean, they've got a good point about it. Sergio Parise um, is coming yeah. in this one, Shane. 138 caps to his name. An Italian legend. Is he? Do you think he can get one little boost out of his team? One, one final hurrah for what has been an iconic career for the big number eight? Oh, look, I think... For Italy, 
and and the, you know, look, they weren't too bad against the Wallabies last year. I'll admit, um, <laughs> we still got the job done, uh, just. But um, you know, we um, look for Italy. One thing I always say is there is the spirit of rugby, and for the smaller nations that are there. I think they're going to still enjoy playing the big guys. Um, and and it's going to be an experience, a hell of an experience, if I could use that expression, that they're never going to forget. Because um, I would just say to, to teams like Italy, go out there and really just enjoy the run out. You've deserved to make it and qualify for the World Cup and and just just um, enjoy playing playing the spirit of rugby. There's not much hope going for the Italians as they're really um, being in that pool of those two big heavyweights of, of world rugby, essentially. But yeah, they've got they could learn a lot. I think they could develop a lot. They could build a lot from the tournament. But um, I don't fear they're going to get too much out of it. And like Brett says, the possibilities that this next side could do something special, or one of the two next sides, Namibia. So mm. seated fourth going into this one. I mean, you've got to watch a lot of tier two low depths rugby around the world to have a real insight of what these Namibians can do. But again, they've made it. They're not the bottom seeded team either. So they've got to have done something right here, Brett. They've made it this far. They're getting more experience going around the world. You see a lot of these guys playing in South Africa as well, um, mm. getting up there through those levels. Can they, you know, they've, their build-up hasn't been great. They've, they've mm. played some club sides in this, and they've been pretty well beaten as well. Doesn't look good for them, but surely there's a lot they can learn from being in a tournament like this. A hundred percent, and Namibia always always managed to be a fixture of of, of the World Cups. Um, qualifying never seems to be a huge a huge issue for them, and they always seem to to be around. And obviously, I have a bit of a special place in my heart being being the only other African team in in the World Cup. Um, look, when they play Italy, I think they're going to throw the kitchen sink at Italy. To be honest, um, they will really mark that game as. As, as a game to, to make a statement and they'll have a few good moments against South Africa and New Zealand I think as they've had in the past um, but I reckon that they're going to be circling the Italy game in the calendar and really and really believe in themselves that, that they can possibly get a get a win over you know, a reasonably high profile team that would be an upset I mean that, it's not Japan level mm. upsets but it would be pretty special if they could do something like that and Shane what have you made of this Namibian team have you seen much of them um, and coming into this, I mean, World Cup-wise, like, like Brett says, they do normally put their hand up pretty well. And, I mean, the All Blacks were in the same pool as the, as the Namibians' last World Cup as well. And we see them do a pretty good effort as well. And something you'd think about teams like, like this Namibian side, they're only going to get better because this exposure is what they need. And I guess it goes back to that argument of the Tier 2 nations getting more rugby at that top level, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh... Look, I remember a very brave Namibia took on the Wallabies in 2003, and it was 142 to nil, and the Wallabies that day rested a lot of key players. Um, but what they took out of that game, um, playing the then the then world champions, um, and and getting exposure, um, like they are going to get against two two big heavyweights like New Zealand and South Africa, who both won this cup a significant amount of times. Um, it's just just the, the fact that they can learn to just 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 learn, learn about rugby. Um, and, yeah, they're going to mark that game against Italy as a, a real chance um, that they can win a game out of this out of the pool and really enjoy their tournament. So I certainly will be one for watching that one as well. So good luck to them. Um, as Brett said, they're the other African nation in the World Cup. So just just go out there and do Namibia proud, do the jumper proud, and they always have and they always. It's that old thing, isn't it, of um, nothing to lose, everything mm. to gain. If they lose by 100 points, well, that's what you're probably expected to or deserve to get. You go out there and put in a performance, it puts those players in the shop window too because there's mm. clubs that are going to be watching. Every club around the world is going to be watching this tournament and they're going to be looking at these little teams and looking for those guys that they can pick up on the cheek, no one wants, and they can fill out their squads very, very nicely. The other team, which kind of makes this, this lower half of the pool quite competitive, is the Canadians mm -hmm. really falling off the pace 
um, in recent years. I mean, Canadians really were competitive with, with the Eagles from USA, um, and those two really went hit, hit for hit throughout a number of years. Fallen off recently, which is a bit of a surprise considering the, the talent they actually do have and the players that are playing around the world in professional club leagues. Um, they are seated bottom of the pool, but I think when they come up against, like you guys talked about already, the Italians and the Namibians, um, they certainly have players, Brett, that can do the job. And of course, those who are familiar with Super Rugby will know about the Chiefs um, back rower, Tyler Ardron, who is actually captaining this Canadian side. So this team, I think, I look at it and I think it's got potential that they could actually do a lot more than even what we were expecting from the Namibians as well. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, when um, we saw we saw quite, quite a lot of Canada in, the, in that last World Cup. Um, had, a, had a few pretty good moments. I think it was New Zealand that they played where they scored the first try of the game. So, um, look, they're, they're a team capable of, of quite a high, of quite a good style of attack. Um, mm. and, and a lot of, a lot, a lot like this Namibian team as well, like you said, nothing to lose, but everything to gain as well. And um, you, you're, you're quite right again when you said the clubs will be watching. And you see in the last World Cup, guys like um, Gurumaru, who, who was very well known in Japan, not, not so in the rest of the world, became a, sort of a superstar overnight after the African game. His career hasn't gone too well since then, but he did get that contract with the Reds and then later to Lon. So it's definitely an opportunity for these guys if they they sort of know that they're not going to make it out of the pool, but you, they're going to be playing very, very hard, especially against the bigger teams. And um, that Namibia Canada game should be a stunner. Yeah, it's one to look out for, isn't it? Mm. The guys, I mean, already playing at that level. DTH Van der Merwe, how could we even forget mm. that guy? He tore it up here in New Zealand in 2011 and is still playing. Um, in Glasgow as well. Taylor Paris is playing for Castrays. They've got quite a few guys. Um, they've got a couple of other players in Castrays as well. So they've got guys playing at a good level, and especially now of the MLR over in the States too. They can definitely bring their level of rugby up to a higher grade. Um, chance of the Canadians doing something special, Shane? You, you picking they won't finish bottom? Well, I think it's a matter of who might finish third, which gets a lot of respectability in, in that in that pool, um, Canada, Canada, every chance of finishing third. Um, I think that they've they've got some players there. Um, certainly, Tyler Adron is handy for the Chiefs um, when he plays Super Rugby. And you mentioned a few other players that are playing in overseas leagues, and yeah. that's only good for their exposure and you know a chance for other squads to fill their list after the World Cup. So, look, uh, I'm not expecting overall fireworks from Canada but certainly you know the way they worked hard to qualify um, they qualified in a game that had more mud than Australia's biggest swamp lake so um, <laughs> they they'd, um, so they're a gritty side they're not afraid to um, you know get their fingers dirty and have a crack um, they'll um, so, finishing off, boys, we've gone through all the five teams so far. Time to put your money where your, where your ideas are, I guess, where your thoughts are, where your faces are. The pool, one to five. Shane, kick us off, buddy. How are we going to end up? Who is your top place finisher through to your final place finisher? <laughs> I think it might come down to the points. Uh, one would be New Zealand. Two would be the Springboks. Three would, um, you know, I've thought very long and hard. I think three would be Canada, Italy, five Namibia. Canada, Italy to come fourth. Jeez, I'm noting these down. <laughs> Brett, how about yourself? Are, are you siding with Shane or are you going to flip the tables at the top? Uh, a few differences on, on the top and, and throughout the. The rest as well. Um, I've gone. I've, I've won South Africa. I obviously tipped them, um, and I think they'll go undefeated throughout the pool. Um, to New Zealand, um, very very close behind. Um, uh, three. I'm still going Italy. I think even though there's a potential for an upset, I think the the Italians are still class. I mean, they they play in the Six Nations, um, one of the best rugby comps in the world, and they they play. Quality opposition every single year, day in day out. So then they'll, they'll definitely be prepared for this um, for this World Cup. Uh, four, I'm going with Namibia. Um, 
I, I just think they have they, they have something special within this World Cup. Uh, I think they can get the win over Canada, if not Italy, and um, which leaves Canada um, not far behind at all at, at fifth. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the thing is, with the way these pools go, is one of those sides could upset Italy. So say, say Namibia, for instance, do upset the Italians, but they could quite as easily lose to the Canadians as well, mm-hmm. which puts them completely wasted time. Just like the Tongans, I always reference this, the Tongans beating France uh, back in 2011, and then they lost to one of the lesser sides, can't remember who it was, which otherwise they would have qualified instead of the French, who made the final. So how things can change with one game. But personally, myself, I'm going to be going a little bit a little bit from Shane. I'm going to go in the, the All Blacks finish top, the Springboks to grab in second. I agree with Brett, on the other hand, with the Italians, that when they play a lesser opposition, they look really impressive. The problem is, we don't see them against lesser opposition that often, and we see them against England and Ireland and Wales, and they get thumped. Um, they're just not that top-level league just yet, but I think they should make short work of the Canadians and the Namibians. But I'm going to toss up the bottom two. I'm going to put Canada to mix it up and come in that fourth spot and then Namibia to come in at the bottom. That is my picks. We're going to say different. How about that? That's a good way to wrap it up. But that is us. That is us for Pool B. Nice and easy, nice and quick, nice and simple. Nice. Any um, extra words you want to say about this, Pool gents, before we wrap up? Uh, just just supporting my boys all the way. Um, I'll be in a Slavkin <laughs> pub in Perth all day Saturday. Getting ready for it. <laughs> Should be quite a bender of a weekend, but I'm looking forward to it. Should be good. Right, that's us wrapped up. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Remember to check out the description for all your little links, all your thoughts um, on the website. We've got articles coming out every day uh, for the Rugby World Cup. And, of course, don't forget to join Superbrew to try and prove us all wrong as well. But until we meet again for the next pool, thanks for tuning in, as always. And don't forget, take care.